celebrated the independence of the greatest nation in the world. There's no other place I'd rather be than America. There's many places I love to see, but America's the only place that I would want to be. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that here in our city, we did not see a lot of casualties as there was in other cities across the country. During the 4th of July weekend, there's always extra casualties, deaths. Some of my favorite cities, Philadelphia experienced some casualties. Chicago experienced some casualties. You know, Indianapolis experienced some casualties. But thank God we had minimal casualties here in Albuquerque. And I'm just so grateful just to be alive and thankful to God. He's given each and every one of us another opportunity to be in the land of the living. To my online family, we welcome you again, and we thank you for taking the time out to be with us. I want you to hit that like button and hit the share button to invite somebody to come in with us to hear a word from the Lord tonight. And before we get started, I got a special announcement, very special announcement, that in 15 days, on the 20th of July, the 20th of July, here at God's House Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico, New Destiny Fellowship International will be hosting the Midsummer Assembly here at our church. And we got delegates coming from the East Coast, the West Coast, from the Midwest, from the South that will be here with us. And I'm expecting and looking for a powerful move of God. There's some great speakers that are going to be speaking during the conference, and we're just looking for God to do a great move. So I want everybody who's viewing with us and those that are here tonight, you know, but put it in your calendars, July the 20th. We're going to have a power-packed two-day celebration, the Mid-Summer Assembly of New Destiny Fellowship International here at God's House Church. So we want you to invite somebody, bring some people, but most importantly, come yourself and to receive what God has for you. And tonight, let's just bow our heads before we go to a word of the Lord in prayer. That we just begin to pray that God would just do what only God can do. There's so much turmoil in the land. There's so much bickering and fighting. There's so much just things that you never would have thought would be happening in our land, but I'm just grateful and thankful to God today that I have the ability to call upon his name and to, for him to hear my prayers and to answer my prayers. So as we bow our heads, most kind, gracious Father, we're thanking you today for this another opportunity that you've given unto us to be, O oh God, in the land of the living, to hear a word tonight that will bless our lives, we're thanking you, God, for just the ability, oh God, that you've given it to us to just have breath in our bodies, activity and movement of all ligaments and joints, to be, oh God, as we used to say, clothed in our right mind. I'm thanking you today, oh God, that we're able, oh God, this day to lift our hands freely in worship and praise to thee. I'm thanking you today for those that are gathering with us here in the sanctuary and online today. Father, only you know the circumstances, situations, conditions that they went through this day. But I'm blessing you right now, God, for moving in their uh, situations right now. Provide, meet the needs, oh God. Do what needs to be done, God. The deep desires upon the hearts of your people this day. I'm thanking you, God, for moving right now. And Father, I pray that you would just bless your servant to speak your word, oh God, distinctly and clearly under the unction guiding the leading of the Holy Ghost and not of himself. But we bless you right now, Father. Have your way today, this day and forevermore in our lives. Be with us, guide us, and lead us, and use us for your kingdom purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, tonight I want everybody here to open up your Bibles. The Lord changed everything I wanted to do today, but I'm celebrating him because he put a word, I feel, in my mouth to bless us tonight in our series, Cho Choices and Decisions. But we're going to be in this series tonight. We're going to go to Exodus chapter number 32. This is a very profound chapter that we're going to probably stay in for a couple of weeks here in this series. But... Choices and decisions, we all make them each and every day, many times a day. Sometimes we do it and don't even understand the significance of what decisions we're making. We don't think about it. We just react and do. And sometimes 
in hindsight, we look back and say, if I could have done it this way or that way. But as I tell people all the time, when you make a decision, you're making the best decision you feel at that point in time, in time. We don't know the decisions, how we're going to turn out until after the fact. But when you make that decision, that was the best decision you felt that you could have made at that particular time and moment. It's easy to second guess ourselves. It's easy to look back and say, man, or you were crazy. You should have did this, that, and the other. But what I was dealing with at that particular time, this was the best thing I felt I could do. And I was speaking to an individual today, and they were sharing me some things that had transpired in their life with a certain individual and how the individual um, apologized to a degree and, and said, you know, you were the best person that was in my life at that particular time and moment, but didn't realize it until many years later. And I was state, stating to the particular individual I was speaking about that this is how we do as people. We don't realize how great, how important, what God has brung to our lives in the, in the uh, person of people until after the fact. And as I begin to talk to the individual, I begin to think in my mind, how many times have we as individuals discarded people that God had brung to us to be a blessing? But at that particular time and moment, we weren't thinking like that. But over time, we have the ability to look back at some of the choices and decisions we made and how we interacted with individuals. And I told this individual that the decision that person made, now they recognize and realize the errors of their ways, and now they'll be able to move forward and go on and realize that when God brings key select individuals into your life, you got to cherish them and honor them and adore them because we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we got to cherish that person for today because if God thought enough to bring somebody special into your life, you have to cherish that individual and thank God for them. And last week we were dealing with Rehoboam. There in 1 Kings, I think it was chapter number 12. Rehoboam there. And the young man took over the kingship from his father Solomon. And at 40 plus years of age, he was about 40 or 41 years of age, he wasn't a novice per se, but he was a novice when it comes to kingship, to ruling. But now he had the opportunity to now lead the people. And the people came to him with Jeroboam, and they asked him very nicely, if you will. They came to him in, um, with a nice spirit about them and asked him if he could relieve some of the taxation and burdens that his father Solomon had placed upon them. And he does something that was a, a good deed, if you will. He consulted with the wise men of the kingdom, those men that had sat under his father, that had worked with his father, that knew the inner workings of what his father had done. And they begin to speak to him and give him some key points and key uh, information and revelation to help him in the decision-making process of relieving the burdens up off of the people, or keeping things as they were. And as we all saw last week, the Bible lets us see that Rehoboam did not heed wise counsel. But what he did, the Bible lets us see, was he listened to those that he grew up with, his peer group. And as I was thinking about that after last week and, and over the weekend, sometimes it's our peer group that can get us in a lot of trouble. Because it's individuals that are on your level but they don't have no wisdom, they don't have no knowledge, and they'll tell you to do sometimes the very things that they won't do. And Rehoboam, instead of listening to the wise counsel that was given to him, but first and foremost, praying and seeking God for direction and instruction to the question that was posed to him, he did not do that. And the Bible lets us know that he chose to follow the ignorant reply of his peer group. And that choice and that decision disrupted and messed up the nation and divided it. And he had the opportunity, he had the choice to make was, do I abide by what the wise counsel is or do I listen to the unwise counsel of the young novice men who just were hangers on, people that grew up with me, 
that were in my inner circle, they were only connected to me because what I could bring and do for their life. And we all have people like that. Some of the people you run with today are only with you for what you can bring to their life, what you can do for them. As soon as you stop doing what you're doing for them, they're gone. And I had to learn that lesson the hard way, that I had people that I thought were in my corner when we were coming up, but it was because of the influence, it was because of the uh, people that I was connected to in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World or other organizations around the country, that these people were, were hangers on. They were leeches because they thought I could take them somewhere, that I could open a door for them. And as soon as I began to pull back, those individuals begin to move away like roaches. You know how when you turn on that light, the roaches scatter? That's the same thing they did. And some of the people in your life, as soon as you begin to pull back, they're going to be like them roaches. It's going to begin to scatter from you. But instead of listening, he made a bad decision, bad choice. And I began to think about that. I wondered in my mind if in his retrospect, looking back as he got older, did he ever reflect back upon what if? And that's a powerful two words that we all have stated, what if? What if I had done this, that, and the other? But when you're in real time, there is no what if. Because you can't go back and undo what's been done. But all you can do is make sure I don't repeat the same mistakes and the same steps that I did to get me to a bad decision. But let's go here to Exodus. Because there's something here that it really blew my mind as I began to read this and really meditate upon it. Exodus chapter number 32 I'm just going to read a few verses here, and then we're going to dialogue about it a little bit. Exodus, verse number 1 of chapter 32 says, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And verse number three says, And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Here we see something in verse number one that's very powerful to me. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, they gathered themselves together unto Aaron and I begin to think about this here, and it struck in my spirit here, these people here. Moses is now up in Mount Sinai. He's up there with the Lord, getting ministered to. God is speaking to him and giving him the law and the commandments there. And he's been away. It's a sum total going to be a 40 days. But he's up there. And these people here, because he's on what I call ordained delay. And this ordained delay, why I say it's ordained delay, sometimes God will bring a, or ordain a delay in our lives to see where we're really at. Sometimes he'll bring a delay in your life to see where you are, where your spiritual maturity really is. That see, these individuals here where God was trying to show to themselves even to Aaron and to, the, and to a Moses when he came down, is that sometimes God's got to show you where your spirituality really lies. And here are these individuals here. They had been with Moses. They had come through some things with God. But now when he delayed some things, you really see the heart of the people. But what really gets me here in this text here, this portion of the text, is when they came to Aaron, and the Bible says they gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said up unto him, basically, get up, make us gods which shall go before us. 
As for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Here Aaron does now. What gets me here, when they begin to speak, I was baffled, read this many times, but I did not hear any correction or direction from Aaron. I did not hear Aaron speak anything about wait, hold on. And I was thinking about it, and uh, the song by Kenny Rogers came to me, uh, the line, sometimes you got to know when to hold them, and sometimes you got to know when to fold them. And as I begin to think about Aaron in this predicament, it baffles my mind that how Aaron had been the number two man with Moses and what they had went through, what God had done with Aaron and how God was using Aaron to be the priest here of what he was going to be uh, with the nation of Israel. But when the people came, it let me see something about the character of Aaron. Sometimes people can walk with the leader as long as the leader is visible. But when the leader is gone, you really see what's within that person who's been walking with the leader. Because here Aaron had been walking with Moses. But now all of a sudden, due to an ordained delay, Aaron allows the children of Israel to come to him and get him to a point in a place where he has now to make a decision, a choice and a decision that has monumental consequences. And what I read here and what we've read, we see nowhere where Aaron consults God in the matter. What do you see here? It says that they speak to him, they tell him, we don't know what has become of Moses. Aaron's response should have been, first and foremost, Moses is with our Lord and Savior. He's with God himself. He's getting a message. He's getting a word that will bless our lives. But Aaron, being mealy mouth, didn't say nothing, didn't stand up. He folded. He made a conscious decision and choice not to stand up and declare and decree. We're not going to do anything. We're going to stay here until Moses comes back with the word from God. But what does he do? Instead of relying upon all that he knew that God had spoken, he succumbs to the will of the people. And I begin to think about that. That hit me with a ton of bricks. How many people succumb to the will of the people in a leadership capacity? This man here was in a leadership capacity. But then I can't just put it all on Aaron. Because as I was reading through this, it came to my mind, what about the other leaders that were there? No one spoke up and said, Aaron, what are you doing, man? Even Aaron himself, he folded and succumbed to the will of the people. He had a choice. Do I do what God has told us to do? Do I stand still and declare and decree that we're not going to do anything that's contrary to the word of God, what he's spoken to us. Remember, these people had come out of idolatry. They've come out of the Canaanite Baalism. And now these people want him to make a visible image that they could worship, blatantly, totally disrespecting the God that had delivered them out of all the bondage, the pain that they had been through for 400 plus years as a nation. How the word had come down through the generations of these people at this time about what had transpired. But how they overlooked all that and said we need a God that we can basically see and feel when they had the same thing before. But because they were distorted with their vision, they succumb to the wiles of the enemy, if you will. And look what Aaron says. Break off the golden earrings which are in your ears and bring them everything to me. This was his point right here in verse number two. He had a choice to make. He could have said no. 
He had all the pertinent information that he needed in the decision-making process of what he was faced with. But what did he do? He turned a deaf ear to what he heard and what he knew he should do, and he did the very opposite. He made a conscious choice to override what he knew to do, which was right, and he made a decision based upon the pressure of the people that he was with. Peer pressure is a dangerous thing because it'll get us to do things we don't want to do. Each and every one of us here has succumbed to peer pressure at one point in time in our life. We've done some things that we knew to be wrong, but because I don't want to fall out the graces of those that I'm with, I got to do what they want me to do. As I'm sitting here thinking, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I was 16 years of age. Some of y'all laughing at me. Apostle, first lady, Darren and Delisa went to Wilmington, Delaware for Thanksgiving. I was home for five days, I believe it was, all by myself. I had some friends of mine come up by. They knocked on the door. They said, D, what's happening? I said, oh, man, nothing. I'm just sitting here. I said, Mom, my dad, everybody, they gone. Where they go, man? Did they go out to eat and left you at home? I said, no, they done went to Wilmington, Delaware. They said, what? You by yourself? I said, yeah, man, I'm by myself. Now, some of these individuals were friends of mine. One of the individuals, his father owned the land in the addition, built the houses where we're at. He was a multimillionaire. Some of the other individuals there, their parents had some money, and then some of them didn't have none, some of the fellas. But they said, Dean, man, your parents are gone. When are they coming back? I said, man, well, they're going to be there. They probably won't get back to Monday, maybe Tuesday. They said, oh, D, okay, all right. They said, well, man, what you going to do right now? I said, nothing, man. I'm just going to chill. They said, man, come on, let's go out. I said, okay, where we going? They said, oh, just come on, get in the car. So we get in the car. Sister Fadeep, I'm in the car. And uh, they said, hey, D, we got something for you, man. I said, what y'all got? They pulled out a bottle. Some of y'all are too young, Mike and, and Bianca. Some of y'all may be too old, Apostle and First Lady. And some of y'all might be right there. Sister uh, Paulette and, and Sister Pearlie and maybe even Sister Walker. They gave me a bottle of Little Kings. I see the smiles on some of y'all faces. Some of y'all know about Little Kings. It was alcohol. I had never drunk any alcohol up until that point in my life. I'm in the car and the peer pressure hits your boy. I could have said, I should have said, man, I ain't doing that. No. No. I'm hearing you know, the voice is on your shoulder. I heard the voice on the left say, you know better than to do that. You're going to get yourself in some trouble that you can't get yourself out of. The other voice, man, you 16 years of age. Go and enjoy yourself. Your parents are long gone. They ain't going to be home. And my boys, like, come on, D, man. You going you gonna to punk out on us? I said, no, man, I can't do that, man. Come on, D. Instead of standing up, I did an errand. I succumbed to the peer pressure of the people. The next thing you know, Brother Mike, I done popped the top. We driving around. I done put down eight bottles of Little Kings. Now, I'm sitting there in the car. I'm feeling good. I'm laughing and joking. They said, let's go to Burger King to get something to eat. So we get to Burger King. I try to get out the car. I take one step, and I'm stumbling. They all start laughing. And I'm looking at them. They say, oh, D, you buzz. I said, man, I'm cool, man. I just stumbled. Man, my, I tripped over my feet. I'm stumbling as we walk in. So we get in the Burger King. I eat a little something. It kind of brings the buzz down. We get back in the car, and I start drinking some more. Next thing you know, party at the Revs, kid. I'm telling all on myself. I'm, I'm confessing. We had a party out this world at the house. We got some, some, some liquor. 
We had some hairy buffaloes. I had three toilets. We only used two. We had beer, everything in the house. I succumbed to the peer pressure. We had Everclear. Everclear is the hardest and strongest liquor you will ever have in your life. You can't taste nothing but Everclear. You can put this much in there and it still is so strong. You can drive a car on Everclear. Man, it was a party at the Rams crib. My boys, everybody came. I couldn't even enjoy myself because I'm worried about don't touch my mama's china, don't touch this, stay out of this room. What are you doing in here? Come out of there. Well, I learned a lesson because three days later, my mom and dad and them home, they asked me how everything went. Oh, I had a good time. I lied. Oh, I just stayed home. I didn't do much of nothing. I was drinking all weekend long at my house, their houses, and wherever house we could get to. I'm laying on the floor, and I look. The TV was right in front of me, and I just had to look over to my right. And there under the couch was three beer cans. I cringed. I said, oh, God, my mama going to find that. I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. When they went to bed, I lit that living room. I picked that couch up. I picked up everything that I could. I checked everything. I was scared to death. But I succumbed to the peer pressure just like Aaron. I had the ability to make a choice. And I made a bad choice, a bad decision that affected my life from that moment. Because from age 16 to 29, until I moved to Albuquerque, I was a weekend alcoholic, if you will. I knew how to drink and come to church afterwards. I knew after service was over, I'd be looking at my watch, okay, it's 1030. The party is coming. And it affected me because I made a choice at 16 but the decision that I made then affected me for a long time. I didn't even realize how bad it was until when I moved here and something said, man, you need to get you a drink. And then I heard the voice say, if you go get a drink, exposure is coming to you because you're in a place where you can't duck and dodge like you did in Indianapolis. When I heard that, I immediately said, no more. And I was thinking about this from the standpoint of how Aaron had to make, a, he had the ability to make a choice and a decision. But he did the wrong thing. He succumbed to the people. Instead of telling them, we're not going to do this. We're going to stay faithful to God. We're going to stay, we're going to hold. But what did he do? He folded. And he folded badly. Think about it here. His brother, his leader, the one that he was working alongside with and helping fulfill the call that God had placed upon Moses in life. And he was helping him, being the mouthpiece because Moses couldn't speak. So God took away the excuse and gave him Aaron, who was a prolific speaker, eloquent with his speech, with his words, his phraseology. And when the people came to him, all that went to the wayside. And he succumbed to the people here. To the degree, instead of him telling them after verse number two, he tells them to bring me the golden earrings off of your sons, your daughters, your wives. When he should have told them, we ain't doing nothing. I cast that thought to the pits of hell. But he entertained it. Then he made the choice to walk in the decision-making process of doing what the people wanted to be done. How many of you have had the opportunity to not do what those in your peer group, your circle, have asked you to do? But we knuckle under the pressure because of the fact we are not willing and ready to stand. We make a bold statement about I'm standing on the word of God. But when God puts you on display or you're going to stand as what you've spoken, many times we have folded and crumbled and failed. This ordained delay was orchestrated to let Aaron, first and foremost, see just where he stood because he succumbed to the pressure of the people and let Aaron see that he wasn't in the place and position where he may have thought he was. And see, sometimes God's got to put us on, a, uh, on delay to let us see that the spiritual maturity we think 
and the level we think we may be at, we're nowhere there. And so he'll bring an event into your life to allow you to see by the decision and the choice that you made that you're nowhere where you thought you were. It's a humbling experience. And it's an experience where it will, if you allow God to bless you in this process, it can take your life to another level, another realm. Look what the Bible says. And they begin to break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and they brought them to Aaron. And as I was thinking, as Aaron was receiving all this gold, instead of taking a step, and I know the Spirit of God must have spoken and ministered to him, but because of the freedom of choice and free will that we have, Aaron overrode what God was speaking and walked into his free will and made a decision to please the people and not stand on what God had declared and decreed for the nation and what he knew was right. He receives at the gold from them, and look what he does. He fashions it into a molten calf, and the people say, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought us up out of the land of Egypt. And as I was beginning to think about that, what came to my mind is how quickly we forget. How quickly we forget. All because God had Moses in a delay to see about what the people would do. How quickly they went back to the mindset of Egypt. And see, sometimes people cannot go forward because they never will stop going backwards, if you will. Sometimes God delivers us out of circumstances, out of situations, and gives us new, clear road in front of us. But we want to stay stuck where he took us from, what he brought us out of. And as I was reading it, the thought came back to my mind, when a person leaves God or the things of God, you only go back to what you know. And when they made this conscious decision to bring these golden earrings and the gold and jewelry that they had, and they gave it to Aaron to make this molten image, they went back to what they knew, their comfortability, which was in false gods that they saw. And many times when people, whether it's turning their back on God, whether it's in a bad relationship, if you step back and see, sometimes people, you only go back to what you knew. You return back to what you knew. These people here, all that he had done for them. But as soon as there was just a momentary lapse delay, they immediately want to go back to the mindset and worship of Egypt. Some people can never get on the past no matter what God's done for them. No matter what he's prophesied, no matter what he's shown them, no matter what he's told them, no matter how much he's even blessed them, they can never get over the past. How many people we know are still stuck in the hurt that happened 25 years ago? They can't get over it. God has done tremendous great things, has blessed them to go higher than they've ever been before. But as soon as something comes up that triggers something, we go back to yesteryear, to yesterday. It's good to have a memory of where you come from, but it's even better not to stay stuck in that memory. And see, some people want to stay stuck in that memory. God has blessed you, taking you to higher heights, giving you greater things than you ever had before. And as soon as he gives us a delay, in our minds we want to go back to Egypt. These same individuals Time and time again, it was always what we had in Egypt. Never celebrating and blessing God for what he had done for them, what he was doing for them, and what he was going to do for them. I kind of liken it to when Peter stepped out the boat. Peter now had the opportunity. He had the choice. When God told him, when he said, Lord, if it be thee, be thou bid me to come. He had a decision and a choice. He could have stayed put and stayed where he was at, or he could have got out the boat. He got out the boat. He was fine until he allowed his mind to cause him to wander. 
If he had to stay focused on Jesus, he'd be walking on water to this day. But he does like many of us. Once we get out the situation, which is the boat, and we get on the sea of unlimited possibility, which was the sea that he was on, instead of staying focused on the word that I heard that took me and lured me and gave me, bid me to come out on the water, he looks around. And what did he do? He began to sink. But he made the decision and the choice to keep his eyes not on Jesus, but on everything else around. And this is sometimes our downfall. We get our eyes on everything else except the one who delivered us, who brought us out, who's taken us to higher heights and deeper depths. As long as we stay locked in on him, we're fine. But as soon as we get our eyes off Jesus, we begin to sink. We begin to drown. And we lose our faith like Peter did. When our faith should have stayed anchored in the one that called us out. But we allow the exterior factors to get in the way. Aaron here allowed these people. It makes me question what relationship did Aaron really have with God? This is just me talking right now. I question because he has seen and heard too much that God had done. But it don't matter how close a man may say they are to God, their actions speak louder than their words. Here he was, knew what God had spoken, was with his brother Moses, had seen God do some great things. The rod that he held in his hand, he saw it devour the serpents of Pharaoh and then stretch back out. He saw God do some great things in the miracles that he performed. But just because a man or woman walks with God, are they really divinely connected with God? Because he's some people only there for the fishes and loaves that he brings, but I really don't want the relationship. Think about those who follow Jesus. As long as he was providing meals for them, they heard the natural word, the spiritual word, but it was that natural stuff that they really wanted. And soon as he stopped providing sometimes that natural stuff, they began to wander away. But you, you question, I question Aaron. Where was he in his relationship with God? This is just me talking. Because how could you turn and go contrary to what you knew God required from you and the nation? How could you allow these Wicked people, this mixed multitudes, get you away from all that God had done up until this point. Just seeing the plagues that came through Egypt should have been enough to keep these people on track. But it lets me see no matter what God does in the life of individual, sometimes people are just going to do what they want to do. Can you imagine seeing the death angel sweep through the land? You got the blood of pride on the doorpost. You're hearing the screams of the Egyptians. You're hearing them hollering and screaming. And I know it was a scream that, we, that they had never heard before. A type and shadow of the screams that they're going to experience in hell, those who may go to hell. But all that was overridden because Moses was on delay. The plagues, the water turning to blood, the locust in the land, the darkness that covered the land. Even though some of the plagues didn't affect the children of Israel, but they saw it from the Egyptian side. You would think that stuff would move them and cause them to recognize and realize that the God we serve is great, mighty, and awesome. But because Moses was on a delay, there was an ordained delay. They're going to tell Aaron, make us a God. And then forgive my expression, but this fool, Aaron, heeds the word of those who are under him instead of standing up and being the leader that he had been positioned to be. 
Are you going to hold or fold? He folded. And as we get into this in the weeks to come, we're going to see the character of him come to the forefront even more so. But look at here at verse number five. And when Aaron saw it, talking about the golden calf, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And look at verse number six, and I'm going to stop here. And they rose up early on the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. They had a feast. They got drunk. They played around, and then they had orgies, going back to the practices that were in Egypt, the very practices that the Egyptians did, they did it. The mindset. That's why we got to be renewed in our mind, because if we're not renewed in our minds, we'll continue the practices that were done, we've done before we got saved. But Aaron here, he didn't hold, but he folded. The people, peer pressure is a serious thing. And peer pressure is not, we always talk about peer pressure with our children and their peers, but you could be 60 years old and succumb to peer pressure. Because people, will pressure you. And if you're not strong to hold, you will fold. And I see here a man that should have held up, but he folded. He allowed the pressure of the people. And I begin to think about it. And sometimes people will fold because they don't want nobody to talk about them, say nothing bad about them. So I'd rather follow the crowd than stand on what God has spoken to me. We've seen it all our lives. People that know they shouldn't do something, but because they want to stay with the Jones crowd, because they want to stay with that parking lot ministry out there crowd, and they know what they should do, but I don't want to get out the graces of Sister Tubuckle. I don't want to get out the graces of Brother Jalapeno. I don't want Mother Cucumber looking bad at me, so I'm going to succumb to the peer pressure. And as we go on, we're going to see just what Aaron's response, the choice and the decision that he made having pertinent and relevant information, how it affected the nation of Israel. Most kind, gracious Father, we're thanking you and blessing you tonight for this word that you deposit into my spirit. Father, I pray tonight that those under the sound of my voice, oh God, that we will hold and not fold when it comes to making choices and decisions that we will first and foremost consult thee in that process so that we can hear clearly and distinctly from you and not from our flesh or from the voice of otherness. I bless you for those that are here and those that are viewing online that we're going to allow this word to come applicable and practical in our lives and that we're going to heed you, oh God, in anything that we do. We're going to seek wise counsel from thee and those that you place in our lives. But Father, I thank you tonight for this word that's blessed my life today, oh God, that's challenging us to go higher and deeper and abstaining and doing the things that you've spoken unto us to do. Bless us this day. Let your will be accomplished in our lives. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. I hope we're going to all hold and not fold. But tonight, before we go, we want to give everybody an opportunity, those of you who are viewing online and those of you here with us in the sanctuary, this is a time where we can sow and give unto God the gifts that he's given unto us, we can give back unto him. Those of you viewing online who want to pay your tithes and give your offerings, you can go to our website there and hit the giving section there, and you can give uh, it through three distinct areas of giving. You can give through our PayPal, you can give through our Cash App, which is dollar sign God's House Church, and you can give through our Givelify. 
any of these areas you can give through largely and liberally as God's placed upon your heart. And if you do not like to sow electronically, just write to us here at God's House Church, 2335 Wyoming Boulevard, Northeast, 87112. And everything you sow, everything you give, we pray a prayer of faith that God will uh, meet the needs that these that you your seed, that you intended it for it to meet, that the, that the need that you're sowing, that you put a, a name on that seed. And we're expecting and looking for God to do something great in your life. My own family here with us today, grab you an envelope there. Uh, you can sow as God has placed upon your heart electronically, put that cash, that check, those money orders, however he's placed upon your heart to sow tonight. But we're thanking you in advance for what you're going to sow. You're sowing in the good ground. Everything you sow, we're using for the upkeep of the kingdom. We're spreading the word, the gospel around the country, around the world, through our missionaries over in Ghana and in India and other parts of the world that God has placed upon the heart of the set man uh, to, to sow into. But we're thankful you for sowing tonight and what I want to do before we go those of you who may have come on a little late I want to let you know that in 15 days here at God's House Church here in Albuquerque New Mexico we're going to have the NDFI the New Destiny Fellowship International Midsummer Assembly here July the 20th through the 22nd there's some power pack speakers and seminars that are going to come and bless our lives through the teaching the ministry of the word of the Lord we want everybody to come out bring somebody with you I'm looking I'm expecting for God to move uh, uh, through the ministry that's coming forth I'm looking for God to bring some deliverance some healing some breakthroughs we're going to see the Shekinah glory fall here so we just want to invite you on July the 20th through the 22nd here with us at God's house church but I thank everybody for being here with us tonight we want to thank you for those of you online with us but we want to also invite you this this coming Sunday, be with us here in service at 10 a.m. to one of the best Christian education departments in the United States of America. At 10 a.m., we have the great uh, teachers here in the sanctuary for our adults. We have our young people, our children having their classes. Uh, we have men's ministry, I think, this coming Sunday. So we want you to come out and be with us uh, this coming Sunday. And also on Wednesday, on Tuesday at 10 a.m., we're here praying and crying out to God at 11.30, our own Pastor Smith is on one of the social media platforms speaking the word of the Lord to help us in our growth and our maturity and our walk with Christ. And then on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., the saints are gathering here in the sanctuary where we're praying unto God and we're seeing and we're expecting God to move greatly through the prayers of the believers. And then at 7 p.m., yours truly is here behind the sacred desk teaching from the series Choices and Decisions. And we're going to be for the next few weeks in the book of Exodus chapter number 32. But I want to thank you for viewing and being with us tonight because here at God's House Church, we are the place where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord of, of us all, but most importantly, he loves us all.